Hello students, today we are going to discuss about asexual reproduction part 2. Welcome to our channel Read Med Prep Academy. What is asexual reproduction? We have already seen in the part 1 about the definitions and various differences between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, the reproduction is by a single parent and there is no involvement of the gamete and the offspring produced genetically identical to that of the parent and the reproduction that occurs is by amitosis or mitotic division of the somatic body cells. This type of reproduction or cell division are called somatic or blastogenic reproduction. Now what are the different types of asexual reproduction? In part 1 we have already seen about binary fission and multiple fission. In this lecture or class we are going to see about the other types of fission like plasmotomy and strobulation. And the other types of asexual reproduction are sporulation or encystment, budding, fragmentation, regeneration. We will go one by one in detail. What is plasmotomy? In animals like opalina, in pilomyxa, which is otherwise called the giant amoeba, there is division of the multinucleated parent into many multinucleated daughter individuals. Initially, what happens? The plasma or the cytoplasm gets condensed. According to the multiple divisions of the cytoplasm, the nuclear division occurs later, depending upon the number of divisions of the cytoplasm. And new individuals are formed. This also occurs in animals like Pleomyxa and Opalina. Now we will go to strobulation. What is strobulation? Strobulation is seen in animals like Aurelia or jellyfish. In these animals which are called metazoan animals, a special type of transverse fission occurs where the entire body is divided by the multiple transverse fissions called strobulation and the small portions that are formed by the strobulation are called strobula. In this the body initially starts separating where there is first division, second division, third division, fourth division and the division goes on and on and on until the entire body is divided into multiple transverse divisions and each strobula gets separated and under favorable conditions the strobula develops into a new organism. Now we are going to sporulation or encystment. What is this sporulation or encystment? This is seen in amoeba. In unfavorable conditions what are meant by unfavorable conditions? Where the conditions are not suitable for the growth of the organism like increase or decrease in temperature, the scarcity of food. Similar in these conditions, amoeba, what happens? It withdraws its pseudopodia. So when it withdraws its pseudopodia, it becomes spherical. And slowly it develops a three layer protective chitinous cyst wall around it and becomes an inactive ball, cystic ball. When under favorable conditions, the encysted amoeba divides by multiple fission and produces small amoebulae, which are small sized and they are also called pseudopodiospore. Under favorable conditions what happens? The cyst wall absorbs water and breaks off liberating the young pseudopodiospores or amoebulae. And each amoebulae what happens? It feeds and develops into a new amoeba and leads an independent life. There are two types of sporulation. One is called exosporulation. The other one is called endosporulation. 
what happens in exosporulation the spore is formed outside the parent body by the parent cell and the parent cell does not disintegrate what happens in endosporulation an endospore is formed which is present within the parent body and the spore is released once the disintegration of the parent body occurs so what are the different stages of sporulation initially the vegetative cell undergoes condensation of the cytoplasm at one side and an unequal cell division that is stage 2 and the four spore is formed and this four spore slowly comes the endospore by developing a three layered wall around the four spore and this four spore gets separated from the parent body and this endospore is released only when the parent body disintegrates so there are totally seven stages in the formation of an endospore this is seen in bacteria now let us move on to budding what is budding where is it seen budding is seen in animals like sponges the parent body produces a small projection called buds and these buds slowly develop and are separated from the parent body and these buds when they are released separately they develop tentacles and become a new organism what are the types of budding we have two types one is called exogenous budding that is seen in hydra and endogenous budding that is seen in noctiluca the first stage what happens there is small projection or elevation from the body of the animal where the ectodermal cells project from the body when you examine the body of the animal you can see a small elevation on the body surface and the ectoderm and the endoderm are pushed out to form a bud and the bud develops a cavity inside and this cavity is continuous with the parent's gastrovascular cavity in stage 3 the bud slowly enlarges develops a mouth and a circle of tentacles around the mouth at its free end in stage 4 the fully grown bud which is attached to the parent body divides itself from the parent body and is separated from the parent body and leads an independent life what is endogenous budding this is seen i already i told you in noctiluca in this animal hundreds of buds are formed inside the parent body within the cytoplasm and these remain within the body of the animal this is seen in freshwater sponges and some marine sponges these buds are called internal buds or gemmules gemmules how does it appear it appears like a ball and these gemmules they contain food laden mass of cells and these cells are called archaeocytes during unfavorable conditions the sponges disintegrates but the gemmules can withstand the adverse conditions and under favorable conditions the gemmules begin to hatch and release the internal buds and these each buds develop into a new individual we can see the different stages of endogenous budding how the vertical body of the sponges becomes spherical gemmule and the gemmules under favorable conditions release the archaeocytes or the internal buds and each bud develops into a new individual now let us move on to fragmentation what is fragmentation the parent body divides into small fragments 
each fragment that is developed from the parent body by division becomes a new individual this is seen in many animals like sea anemones the fragmentation is otherwise called pedal laceration and the lobes are constricted off from the pedal disc this type of fragmentation each lobe that is separated from the parent body by fragmentation develops pisentries and tentacles to form a new sea animal it also occurs in planaria now let us talk about the fragmentation that occurs in the tapeworm tapeworm is otherwise called tinea solium here the old or the ripe proglottids they are called gravid proglottids which are the oldest they are present at the posterior end of the strobula or the body of the animal the gravid proglottids are regularly cut off either singly or in groups the separation of the proglottids from the strobula of the tapeworm is called apolysis and this apolysis occurs in tinea solium or tinea saginata this helps in the transfer of the embryos from the primary host who is man to the secondary host like the pig now let us discuss about regeneration what is regeneration regeneration we can see in hydra again it is a regrowth of the injured part of the animal this was first studied by abraham tremley in 1740 there are two types of regeneration one is called metaphalaxis the other one is called epimorphosis metaphalaxis where the whole body grows from a small fragment that is separated from the parent body metaphalaxis for example when hydra is accidentally cut into several pieces each piece can regenerate and the lost parts of the parent body are again developed and the fragment develops into a new individual the parts that are separated or fragmented from the parent retain their original polarity with the oral ends by developing tentacles and the aboral ends developing the basal discs we can also see such type of regeneration in planaria even in starfish what is epimorphosis epimorphosis is the replacement of the lost body parts there are two types of epimorphosis one is called reparative epimorphosis and the other one is called restorative epimorphosis let us see about reparative regeneration or reparative epimorphosis the only damaged parts alone are regenerated example when a finger gets injured in the human body or any part of the body gets injured it gets regenerated by simple healing process it is also seen in starfish what is restorative regeneration severed body parts can develop for example in starfish where a part of the animal is separated or injured it again develops we can also see in the wall lizard where automization occurs of the tail and again the tail is regenerated this regeneration is used for cultivation of sponges for example if you take a silk cloth and put some sponges and crush it or squeeze it we can see that each fragment that is caused by your squeezing 
or by your maceration develops into a new sponge this technique is used for cultivation of sponges thank you friends subscribe like share and comment our channel read med prep academy don't forget to log on to www.readmedprepacademy.com our facebook id is read med prep academy thank you stay safe stay home study well thank you very much once again